Hello, I'm Dr Claire Shorrock and welcome to lesson number five in our series of lessons on number addition and subtraction for Upper Key Stage 2. Let's start by reviewing the practice activity that Mrs Furlong set for you yesterday. Did you notice something? Did you notice that we added 0 0.24 to this add end? So what did it mean we had to do to the other add end? That's right, we had to subtract 0 0.24. Now I'm interested in how you did this calculation to fill in this missing box here. Did you notice that you've got two tenths and eight tenths? In which case we can use our number bonds. Two tenths add eight tenths is... I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Two tenths add eight tenths is... That's right, ten tenths. And ten tenths is equivalent to... One whole. So that means we have five holes and another hole and then these four hundredths left over so we have 6.04 we can then write out our balanced equation if we have a look at the next question what did you notice that's right we added 0 0.57 to one add end so what did we have to do to the other add end to make the sum the same that's right we had to subtract 0 0.57. So then how did you do this calculation here to fill in this missing box? Did you notice there were 5 tenths here and 5 tenths here? 5 tenths add 5 tenths is, that's right, 10 tenths and 10 tenths is the same as one hole. So we had seven holes in total and these seven hundredths left, so 7.07. .07. We can then complete our balanced equation where the left hand side and the right hand side had the same sum and that sum was 10. You were also set a challenge to have a go at if you wanted about using the same original add ends and this structure to re but redistribute a different amount from one add end to the other and form some other balanced equations. I wonder what you did. I'm sure they were fantastic, so really well done if you had to go at the challenge. Before, excuse me, before we start today's learning, I'd just like to quickly review the learning from yesterday, where you redistributed 340 grams from one add end to the other add end. You subtracted 340 from one add end, so you needed to add 340 to the other add end so you could keep the sum the same. From that, you took the original amount and the redistributed amount and you formed a balanced equation. In today's learning, we're going to show you a different representation for um, balancing equations and we're going to use that to work out some missing numbers in some um, missing number problems. So, have a look at this, pause the video if you want to, tell me what you notice. That's right. This is just an another representation of our uh, bags of potatoes. We've got the two bags here and their total mass was 10,000 grams. We can tell this is a balanced equation because my balance is level. And we've got the equal sign here, which tells us that the total value of the left hand side must be equal to the total value on the right hand side. And we're going to use this representation now to solve some problems. Oh, but before we look at some problems, what do you notice here? Hmm, that's right, here I've shown the redistribution. I've shown the subtraction of 340 from one add end, and I've shown the addition of 340 from the other add end. The balance has stayed level, which means the sum of this side is going to be equal to the value of the number on this side. I've subtracted 340 from one add end, so I need to add 340 to the other add end so I can keep the sum the same. I wonder what might be under, wonder what the value of the numbers is that might be under those orange boxes. Pause the video if you want, have a go at saying the calculation out loud and saying the stem sentence out loud. When you're ready and you've had a practice, press play again. OK, did you spot we subtracted 270 from one add end, so we had to add 270 to the other add end. The balance has remained level, which means 
the sum of these numbers here must be equivalent to 10,000. I have subtracted 270 from one other add end, so I need to add 270 to the other add end to keep the sum the same. Keeping the sum the same shows that the balance is level. Here, what about this one? Pause the video, have a go. Say the calculation out loud and the stem sentence. Did you notice? We added 690 to one add end, so therefore we must have subtracted 690 from the other add end so that we could keep the balance level and the sum the same. Say the stem sentence with me. I have added 690 to one add end, so I need to subtract 690 from the other add end to keep the sum the same. What do you notice about this? It's another different representation. Hmm. Oh yes, look, on the left hand side here, we have the original mass of the bag of potatoes, which the total sum of which was 10,000. On the right hand side, we've got the redistributed amount of the bag of potatoes. But again, the sum was 10,000. So the scale remains balanced because we have the same sum on the left hand side as the right hand side. Let's look at this in the context of a problem now. There is the same number of children in year five as there is in year six. In year five, there are 28 boys and 32 girls. In year six, there are 29 boys. How many girls are there in year six? So. I'd like you to pause the video, read the question for a second time so you've got all the information that you need and have a go. Give you a hint. You should be able to do this with very little calculating and maybe use that balance rep representation that I've left there for you. When you've had a go, start the video again. OK, I wonder if anyone else used the balance representation like I did. I've got my year five children on one side and my year six children on the other side. The balance is level because I know there are the same amount of children in year five as there are in year six. But how does this representation help me solve the problem? How, how does it help me work out how many girls there are in year six? Well, I could represent it using a bar model. I know the total is going to be the 28 plus 32, which is 60. That's the total number of children in year five and in year six. I've got one part here, so I can use this information to calculate the missing part by doing 60 take away 29. But that seems an awful lot of work. I wonder if there's a more efficient way. And usually when teachers say that, they mean, yes, there is a more efficient way. And we like you using efficient ways. When we use an efficient way, a method, um, there's less steps and there's less chances for anyone to make mistakes. So let's have a look. Now, let's take a look at these add ends. What do you notice about 28 and 29? That's right. 29 is one more than 28. So if I add one to my add end, what do I need to do to the other add end? We should be getting good at this by now. That's right. If I add one to one add end, I've got to subtract one from the other add end. 32 subtract 1 is 31. So that means there are 31 girls in the year group. Now, before we move to our next word problem, what I'd like to do is to just have a chat about these add ends. I chose um, to redistribute the 28. Could I have redistributed the 32? What do you think? Here I re redistributed a number of boy to boy. Could I have looked at the number of girls and then gone to the boys? Hmm. Yes, that would be absolutely fine. When we represent these imbalanced equations, we're not so worried about if it's a boy or a girl. It's the numbers that we're interested in. And because addition is commutative, we can do it in either order. It doesn't matter which number I redistribute from, as long as I redistribute the correct amount. Let's have a look. So this is what we did. We looked at the 28. We added one. We noticed we could add one to get 29, which means we could just subtract one from the 32 to give us 31. But could we have looked at the 32 instead? Let's have a look. What do you notice about 32 and 29? That's right. 29 is three less than 32. So if I subtract three from 32, I get 29. So if I've subtracted three 
what do I need to do to the other add end to the 28? That's right, I'm going to need to add 3. 28 add 3, well, I know 28 add 2 is 30, so 28 add 3 must be 31. So it doesn't matter whether we redistribute from the 28 or the 32, we've both ended up with 31 year 6 girls. And that's a lot of a much simpler method, just one set method compared to representing the bar model and doing that more difficult subtraction. OK, shall we have a look at another problem? Sally plans to buy 30 bottles of cola and 25 bottles of juice for a party. Yeah, sounds like a good party, doesn't it? My kind of party. When she gets to the shop, they only have 15 bottles of juice. Oh, no, disaster. She can't buy what she wanted to buy. She does, however, want to buy the same number of bottles of drink in total. If she buys all 15 bottles of juice, how many bottles of cola will she need to buy so that she ends up with the same amount of bottles? You don't want her guests being thirsty, do we? No. So, pause the video, read the question again first. It's really valuable in math to read questions more than once so you get all that information. Then, have a go, maybe use the balance scales represented there for you and see if you can do it by as little calculating as possible. OK, when you've had a go, press play on the video again. OK, I wonder if anyone represented the problem like I've done on my balance scales. So I've got the total number of bottles that Tully wanted to buy, that she planned to buy. And then I've got here the actual what actually happened when she went to the shops. So how can we use this information to work out what we need to work out, the number of bottles of cola that she's going to have to buy? Again, we could represent this in a bar model. We know the total amount of bottles that Sally uh, planned to buy, 55. And we know we've got this part here, the number of bottles of juice that she can buy. So we could do a subtraction 15, 55, sorry, excuse me, take away 15 and find this part here. Or we could use that more efficient method. So let's have a look at the add ends here. What do you notice about 25 and 15? That's right, 15 is 10 less than 25. So I have subtracted 10 from one add end. So what does that mean I need to do to the other add end? That's right, I need to add 10. So 30 add 10 is 40. So that means she had to buy 40 bottles of cola. So that in total, she planned to buy 55 bottles and she actually bought 55 bottles. It just wasn't quite the same as her plan. Again, should we have a look at the other add end? Would it have mattered if instead of redistributing from the 25, we'd redistributed from the 30? Would that matter? Let's have a look. So what do you notice about the 30 and 15? Hopefully you're all shouting out at me now. 15 is half of 30. Good, glad to hear it. OK, so what we notice, we notice that 15 is 15 less than 30. So if I have subtracted 15 from one add end, what do I need to do? That's right, you know this by now, don't you? You've got this. We need to add 15 to our other add end. 25 add 15 is 40. So we redistributed them from the other add end. It doesn't matter which add end you choose to redistribute from, as long as you're redistributing the correct amount. OK, I'm going to... Uh, fantastic work today, guys. Really worked really hard. Really impressed. Really well done. I'm going to leave you with a practice activity that we will pick up again tomorrow. So I've got a scenario for you here. I've got a dad on the balancing scales, on one end of the balancing scales, holding his cat. And on the other end is the daughter holding a dog. OK, I've got some questions for you based on that scenario. How is it possible that this scale is balanced? I wonder if you can have a think about what the masses might have to be. And whether or not you can find a possibility that you'll think no one else will think of. If the mass of the pets is the same as each other, so that means maybe a bigger cat and a smaller dog. What does this tell you about the mass of the dad and the daughter? Oh, here's a here's a thing to wonder. I wonder, do you know roughly what the mass of a cat might be? What about the mass of a dog? Or for a dad or a daughter? 
that may be a little bit of extra practice for you. Maybe go away and do a little bit of research and come back tomorrow ready to be able to tell me the rough mass of a cat and a dog and a dad and a daughter. But anyway, if the mass of the pets is about the same, what does this tell you about the mass of the dad and the daughter? If the dad weighs two kilograms more than the daughter, what does that tell us about the mass of the cat and the dog? Hmm. With this in mind, if I tell you the mass of the dad is 90 kilograms, what has the mass of the daughter got to be? And then what might the mass of the pets be? And there's a challenge. I wonder if you can have a go writing your own problem based on this scenario. So think of something like this and then go and ask somebody else in your family to see if they can solve your questions. OK, so I will catch you again tomorrow. Really enjoy today. You've worked really hard, really impressed. Thank you for all your hard work. See you all tomorrow. Bye bye.